reservation. Damnation. Bleak. Oppression. Small. Small. They're beautiful and sad at the same time. It's beautiful because you're surrounded by people that are just like you. But it's sad because everything that affects big cities, whether it's drugs or alcohol or everything's magnified on a reservation. You see it up front, like in your face. Sick. You know, there's alcoholism, there's, you know, there's abuse, there's a domestic violence. There's, there's a lot of things that go on on a reservation that really goes overlooked. Just a compromise. It was an agreement based, well, a forced agreement probably, that Native Americans were put kind of out of the way, out of sight. Yeah. Prison. It's like where we were trapped. I think it's the most common misconception about reservations. That there's some kind of abundance, that Natives are happy, that they're caring for each other, that they live in some ancient way. Ooh, sad. Poor. A concentration camp. Our reservations were made to uh, isolate Indian people uh, and hope that we would die off. Depressing. Unfair, because they're not as good as other lands. They're the land that the government and people don't want. Trapped. It wasn't great farmland, it wasn't great homeland, and so it kind of feels like a place off to the side. Even to this day, the natives are fighting for rights to keep the little what they have. There are no good reservations. Here's your reservation. You can't go across that boundary. This is your reservation. And I grew up on a Navajo reservation, and we're one of the few lucky people that got to remain where our homelands are. But there are other reservations where people were forced there, and they can't fend for themselves like they used to do in the old days. You can't hunt anymore, you can't fish anymore, because you're just stuck on a reservation on these substandard housing, living in third world country conditions, youths killing themselves because there's no future, there's no hope. That's a reservation to me.